Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton Report. The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter the holiday season again and at krypton report we've created a holiday guide for our listeners it's a couple different items that you can purchase through the amazon portal for southgate you can go through the link through amazon and part of the proceeds of your purchase goes to support our show and other shows on southgate media also for any geek nerd or genre lover check out all the other southgate media holiday guides and from us to you Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and beyond. Winter is here. Happy winter solstice. It is that time of year for us to get cold here in Ohio, which is usually and mostly all the time. But we're, we've made it. We have completed Superman for all seasons. We are in the final chapter, part four, entitled Winter. And couldn't do this alone, so I had to bring in the big guns. And by big guns, I mean Mr. James Cole. And then... Sorry. I'm a big gun. <laughs> for backup, I brought in the even bigger gun, Mr. Brian Peters. Bada boom. <laughs> I just pictured both of you sitting at home doing like the reload thing from Mission Impossible that Henry Cavill did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that they mimicked on Krypton, you know. So yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> but let's let's just cover. Pew, quick... pew, pew, pew. There's been a few news things that I think we should just jump into. Like, um... all right, here we go. Ready? Um, we got our first picture of crypto. For... What he's gonna... he's gonna... in his cape. For season three of Titans. And he's got his super collar on. And that's really cool. The kids really got excited when they saw that Crypto was going to be there. So that was, that was fun. That was nice. Um, did you guys see that photo? No, I didn't. What? No, you, you, did, you did post it in our chat. Um, I'm trying to find it again because did you? I might have missed we, uh, it. it might have been something I. James is like a we, dog. Uh, James is like a dog. Ah, there we go. Why is there a dog in here? Yeah, they the crypto was in was was uh, with him in Cadmus, right? Yeah, he was in season two, but you know he didn't have his cape and his collar on yet. No. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> I did not see that they that he had a. <laughs> that he actually had a cape and collar. So that that, that cape is way too long for that dog. <laughs> he, he's he's going to tear that apart. <laughs> uh, so, in comics news, uh, we got confirmation that Calvin Ellis will be returning in um, post future state and what is it being called? Um, DC Infinite Frontier or something? Yes. I think I think they're I think they're infinite side. I mean we got DC Universe Infinite coming out. Um you know, whatever um we're going to have a new multiverse, I believe, come out of um the end of Death Metal and and possibly Future State, however that works out um i just read death metal six so i'm waiting for seven of course how many are there supposed to be i'm trying to remember seven okay. death metal's got seven um next week they've got two more tie-ins coming out um um okay. oh man now i'm forgetting what they are um so I've... one's a multiverse yeah. Story. And um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm look. I'm going onto DC's page right now to look up uh, what, what's coming out this week because now I'm frustrated. Uh, I just, I just looked, I just looked him up. He's like, dang it, I had this for, for um, He's like, for this coming Wednesday. He's like, I was gonna be awesome. <laughs> I did. I was gonna drop it on him like booyah, and I can't remember. Well, James, so. right? Don't you hate that? I do. We get our final uh, action next week. Yep, which we will be recording, closing out our discussion on Bendis. Or Bendis action. Um, So, um, yeah, it's uh, Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal, The Secret Origin, number one. And, And keep scrolling. All right, for some reason it's not on DC's page, but it was on my pull list from my comic book store. That makes sense. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's the last two one shots, I think, uh, tie ins before. Um, uh, it's, uh, okay, here it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, War of the Multiverses. That's what the last one is. All right. Well, uh, in good, amazing news, we got a new Superman series coming out called Blue and Red. Kind of like how they do the black and white. You know, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, blue. the Batman black and white and the... the... Harley Quinn black and or red, black and white, and Superman blue and red. And the cover was drawn by Lee Bramejo, which Harley always does. looks it, it, it looks beautiful. Yeah, I haven't read my annual reading of Noel yet. I just I would love just a Superman book like done by Bramejo. You know, um, we have, like, the, Le- the Lex... Written and drawn. Yeah, we have the Lex Luthor book, you know, I, that's Superman, but he's depicted in a different style because it's all from Lex's point of view. He appears in Noel. Um, I just I just would really like a full-on book drawn by him. Yeah, yeah, written and drawn by him. Uh, yeah, that would be really good. Uh, he he wrote and drew Noel. Um, he he wrote or um, he drew Luther. It's kind of I mean, Luther's like Joker. It's from a from the villain's point of view. You know, and they're written by Azarello. So, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, we got our Morgan Edge cast, you know, for Superman and Lois. I'm not familiar with this actor, Adam Rayner, of the show Tyrant. He will be Morgan Edge, which is cool. Never seen it. Um, you know, Morgan Edge, interesting character. Uh, you know, he would have been previously played by Adrian Pascar and Supergirl. But, you know, this is post-crisis where anything can happen. It's magical. And Rucker Howard and Smallville. Yes, yeah, no. and somebody else in Smallville because they uh, recasted him again. Here's yes, they did. Another interesting point is we ran a poll asking, how do you prefer your Superman shield on the suit? I said, um, you know, with the new Tyler suit, I posed the question, do you prefer it to be three-dimensional and popped out, much like um, Brandon Routh's? Uh, Cavill's was, um, even Tyler's looks like that. But then you have the symbol that kind of blends into the shirt. Dean Cain's, Christopher Reeve. Um, so what do you guys like? How do you prefer your Superman shield on the suit? Brian, you go first. You've been awful quiet. Um, I, I, I always like on superior costumes, um, their logo or symbol, if you will, kind of really popping, um, because that 
logo or symbol is kind of what they're all about. Um, I always, I I liked how the symbol looked and had that feel uh, with Cavill, uh, Henry Cavill's um, Superman suit. I, I just think it, I think it looks better. I, I think it's more uh, pronounced. Um, I mean, you know, I love Chris Reeve, of course, but, um, you know, the, the symbol looked good with it. Um, but I just kind of like when it's just raised just a little bit popping out. Um, I don't know. I think it looks better. Yeah, it's it's evolved to the point here where where um, <clears throat> some of these symbols look more um, three dimensional. Um, they they come off the suit a little bit. I mean, especially with like like some of your other characters um, who aren't bulletproof. Um, that that raised symbol actually is there's more um, armor across the chest and stuff like that. Um, so it makes sense in in a logical way as well, but uh, yeah, I think the co- the the suits have evolved to where they look a little more textured, um, not quite armored, but uh, the the way that the symbols kind of stand out a little bit more. I think I think I like it. Um, uh, yeah, three uh, D. Well, just just for the results here, fifty eight percent of the votes said popped out in three D, and forty two percent said flat. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty close. That's pretty close for a lot of the polls and stuff that we've run. Like, uh, you know, I look at it kind of like I like a little bit of the texture. You know, I look at the way they do like Henry's suit and even Tyler's suit. It's textured. It's like a. It's there's more to it. Um, I feel like Brandon's suit his original superman return suit was a little too much um and it was a little less with his uh kingdom come style crisis suit um it looked like it was a, you know an add-on kind of like a patch or something that was put on and not as much part of the suit but you mean they put on iron on decals on suits no way no not not at all james <laughs> not at all um so, but yeah, that pretty much sums up the news I had, you know, um, yeah. So we're going to get into, um, Superman for all seasons and, you know, just throwing this out there where we will be talking endless winter probably on the next episode, just because my comic shop screwed up and he didn't hold me back issue two. So I have issue one, three. Four and five, I think, uh, right now. So Yeah, I think we're up to five. They released like three of them this week. Uh, Aquaman, Justice League, and a Teen Titans. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's weird how they're doing Endless Winter. Instead of just being like, I don't, I don't know why they just didn't do like Endless Winter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like why did they do like Endless Winter and then number two is in Flash? And number three is a Superman standalone. A number like it's just, it's very confusing, and it screwed up my shop guy. God bless him. Sometimes things get confused. Well, you know, once we read a little more next week um, for for another one that comes out, because I know Black Adam is coming out next week, and that's an endless winter um, book. Uh, we'll definitely see and talk more about. Um, the the individual stories, you know, because they've got the Justice League book, and then they've got, like you said, the Aquaman, Superman, the Flash. All right. See how each one stands out. So here we go. Da dun dun dun. Here we go. Winter is here. Superman for all seasons. Winter. Um, first page. I found it very interesting that, you know, winter. You know, we talked about, like, winter, and we think about, like, the first day of winter is supposed to be the winter solstice. It's, you know, the the, supposed to be the shortest day of sunlight. And it's going to be cold, and, you know, it stands for different things. Um, One being that this is the most darkness that we have, and from here on out, the light is returning. We are working towards the guaranteed promise of spring. And kind of thinking back to, well, what does that mean in the context of our story? Um, you know, winter 
cold, uh, sometimes, you know, you can think of it as introspective or slow. And we have here Clark, who has returned to Smallville. And we have this section of the story narrated by Lana. What do you guys think about that? Like, I totally forgot that Lana was the one that narrates this part of the story. Um, I, I like it. Uh, it, it's really cool because, you know, she's narrating it besides the, besides the first part. Um, she's the only other person narrating who knows who he is, uh, and what he can do. Um, and she know, and, and she's always, she's always had that, a, a romantic attachment to him. So she's got a, a personal connection when she's talking about him, who he is, what he can do, how she felt about him, how she felt after he revealed a secret. Um, and it was interesting the way that they lined up the story with her dial, with her inner, with her narration. Mm -hmm. I just, I found it interesting just because, you know, this, the story, I like the fact it's not really told from Superman's point of view and, it's connected, but at the same time, like, it's disjointed, um, you know, because we have the stuff he had experienced with Lex last time, and now he's, you know, on the farm. But I do like that it opens up with the, the boy we met before playing on his roof and uh, playing with snow and chasing his cat, and we meet one of the Lexo suit robots thingies you know um, and in the background if you look we see like a welcome to metropolis sign with, with superman and now there's a lex corp sign in front of it saying they're always there for you yeah lex must be feeling pretty good feeling like he drove out superman because we've got clark in in smallville now that's where he went at the end of, um, at the end of uh, fall. Yeah, I had to, I had to remind myself. Um, I had to go back and read the last few pages of fall to remind myself, um, you know, what happened and why he went to Smallville. Um, cause I, I had never read this story before, um, and after such a heartbreaking defeat of this obsessed fan uh, being used against him um, to kind of make him believe that, you know, he's not a very good hero, that he's he's a failure. You know, Lex really, really got to him. Um, so this I, I have to say this issue um, wasn't really what I expected. Um, you know, when I, when I open it up and I, and I, and I'm reading the Lana, um, narration, um, I, I really, I really did like it, um, in terms of her narration and her connection with Clark and the dreams that she had with Clark. Um, but we'll get into it, but it, it really wasn't one I expected the finale for this story to be. I, I agree with that. For some reason, like, it's been a while since I've read this because, like, I wanted to do this for, like, two years now. I wanted to do this kind of, um, you know, like we're doing, you know, do each episode for the for the season. And I bought it, and I, did, I was waiting to read it for that. And for some reason, I remembered the first part, but I did not remember winter at all. Um, so it kind of baffled me, you know, um, but I do like when Lana is talking, I think this is a great way of using Superman common vernacular. She's talking about her and Clark and she says, we went up into the sky like a bird or a plane. I thought that was cool. Instead of just, you know, the usual, look, it's a bird, it's a plane. It was, she's talking about <clears throat> being in the sky like a bird or a plane. And I thought that was cool. So, Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, in in a lot of stories, you know, sometimes Superman and Clark are made to be like different people. You know, like they're both masks, and he never gets to be who he is unless he's like with Lois after she knows his secret with his parents. You know, like he never really gets to be, you know, just just himself. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like that idea. Um, and that's that's the one thing I think that um, stepping out just a little bit that Bendis has done okay with this truth thing, um, revealing Superman's secret is kind of trying to allowing him to be himself. And that's what he's like in this story, you know, as Superman, as Clark Kent, they're one in the same, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and he, he gets to, he gets to be that in this issue. No, it's nice to see that. I, I agree because, you know, Superman, He's always Clark, like, as himself. When he's Superman, he's a little bit more one way, a little bit more confident, a little bit more just bigger. And as Clark, he's a little bit more, like, subtle and removed. But he's not that far from always being himself. Unlike Batman, who, you know, Bruce Wayne is more of a facade. You know, Clark Kent, even in, you know, the bumbliness is still true to himself. So, I, and like you were saying, I like that about, you know, this, this uh, story is it's more of, it's from Lana's point of view, but it's more Clark being Clark. You know, at the beginning we do see Lex um, just looking at the city, admiring what he's done. And then we get Lois, who's at Clark's desk, and she's talking about Superman being gone and Clark. And it's great because she's putting all the pieces together while the dialogue is from Lana talking about, you know, her putting things together and working through it. And then our final thing from Lois is, Lois Lane, that's the stupidest idea in the world. So I always thought that was just pretty funny. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it goes off strong with, with the dialogue, uh, what's happening in the story and her, uh, it kicks off strong with her narration and the dialogue that, uh, um, how, how much what's going on in the story and the dialogue just pair. I think, I think it does it almost better than, than, uh, the other chapters of the book. Mm-hmm. It does. It, it it works quite well. And you know, then we're we're back to the next page. I, I do think this is very interesting because I think the next page shows Clark and Lana uh gearing up to go out walking or Whatever there is that they're going to go do out in the snow. And Clark's wearing his high school letterman jacket. And at first, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Nerd. But I think, it, I think in a way, it's like if you look at it psychologically, it is um, Clark regressing and kind of hiding and trying to return to a more simpler time in his life. You know, where it was in, just... Absolutely. You know, him uh, him and Lana, you know, having fun, just being best friends, no cares in the world. Um, he didn't have this burden that he carries now as Superman. So, I don't know. It just... I, yeah. Oh, um, I mean, I liked in this story how... The, how his parents never knew that Lana um, knew that he had these powers, that he was Superman. I totally uh, That was a nice reveal. I totally forgot that they didn't know. Because 
you know, they say something and she's, they're like, ah, and he's like, yeah, she knows. <laughs> yeah. Um, her, her dialogue, her inner dial, um, her narration is really good. Cause it goes from like how she felt, how she was like, like lost and confused and angry and all this other stuff because of the love she had for Clark, how she always wanted to marry him and, and have kids with him and everything. Um, to how she, how she grows, um, after she left Smallville, after the last time she seen him, um, cause they didn't see each other after that. Um, how she, how she comes to accept it, how she learns that she was special for him to tell her and, and how he is special for having these abilities and only wanting to help people and not use it for his own gain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I really feel for Lon in this issue. <laughs> you know, she's like, he put, you know, he, he pulled me into a field and, and I thought this was it. Like he's going to propose to me and all my dreams are going to come true. And cause we're so much alike, you know, we were both, uh, kind of, kind of orphans and, and, and raised by somebody else. And, um, you know, this, I just want to have all these kids with him. And, and then he just lifts her into the air and she should have been, she should have been flying with a proposal ring, you know, like, you know, metaphorically, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then she just to, just to have all her hopes and dreams kind of crash on her and to see that he wasn't really what she thought he was at all. He's something so much more. Um, so, you know, as as I'm reading this and I'm seeing him in this Letterman jacket and then going to play in the snow, um, which was totally, totally cute. <laughs> um, um, you know, you can't, you can't root for Lana. Like you want to see Clark just pulling and kiss her. Um, his, his, his snow angel. Sorry to interrupt you, Brian. His snow angel oh, was just look real stiff. His legs were stiff and just his arms were moved. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to, I was just going to say that, like, oh, okay. you see, her, you see hers in it and, it and it looks, you know, it looks like a snow angel. You see his and it, it looks like a giant bird. <laughs> and, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and oh no, you kind of get sad. And then, and then you see the, uh, you know, them meeting up with, uh, with Pete Ross there and, you know, Pete, Pete says, you, you guys just don't get it. Like you go out into the real world, uh, you go in the big city and you come back and you don't see how wrong that is. And, uh, I think there's, there's kind of, resentment and jealousy there from Pete. Oh, big time. Uh, you know, he stayed, uh, he, he never went out into that big world. And, and I think, well, he was the one who said at the beginning, he wanted to leave Smallville and go be a millionaire and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, all these, all these things are kind of happening for them and, and he never won his million dollars, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, like it, it kind of made me want a little chapter with, with Pete, uh, you know, saying, narrowing a little bit. Um, I don't know. I wanted to, I wanted to see more of where his head out, his head was out with something. I kind of want it. I kind of want him to be able to find out that Clark has these powers, and you know, get his reaction to Lana knew. Why did I know? You know. No, I I agree with that because, like, I was reading this and I thought to myself, you know, where is our like really good, like Pete, uh, Pete Ross, Clark, and Lana. Like, we like we had we have not had a really good Pete Clark and Lana live action. Um, and it kind of bums me out when I think about it. Like, every version we get is some sort of like, like two characters work or 
or something, but we have yet to get all three of them as like the friendship they all, they should be. And I feel like Pete just gets shortchanged. Pete, yeah, Pete, Pete totally gets screwed, man. Um, <laughs> you know, they they have to change something about him to try to make you like more interested in him. Um, you know, kind of how like he went away on the Smallville show and he came back and he had like powers and stuff. And you know, we we never needed that. You know, product placement, uh, Pete. <laughs> product placement. There you go. <laughs> you know, you know I, I I think there's a really good, interesting story there of. Of you know two two guys being best friends, this kind of this girl kind of being there with them, and and them developing feelings for the girl, and this kind of like love triangle, and this kind of like resentment, and and like you know we were brothers, Clark. Like why why are you telling me things? Why you know why is Lana different? And then you don't even end up with Lana, dude. Like so, what was the point? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, <laughs> There's the, a good story there. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we know that Pete and, and Lana uh, get together. Um, so it's kind of actually nice at right. the end here where we get, uh, as for me, I'll be staying in Smallville with some new hopes and dreams and prayers. And maybe I'll give Pete Ross a call. Yeah, I I did like that part of the ending. <laughs> yeah, comes right after um comes right after we come back to the kid who's chasing his cat because apparently his cat loves to run across these rooftops of these high rise apartment buildings, and um the Lex the Lexobot suit here yeah the Lexobot suit here hollering at the child scares him about falls off a building, and Superman saves him, and uh, <clears throat> um. Superman, uh, Superman rescues him, and they have a, a a nice meeting. Superman remembers him, and uh, there at the end, he's, folks call me Superman, and Superman's back, back in Metropolis. I just, I just think it's funny, like, like he he recognizes the kid. And I would be like, boy, we've already been here once. Stop, <laughs> right. stop running on rooftops. Okay, I know I'm Superman, but I can't be everywhere. And there, that, and in, in this chapter, there is something about Tim Sale's artwork um, with the winter and the rain, oh, um, the I, snow and the flood. I, um, so, like, it getting, looks really good. I agree. I, I don't. I think it's a lot of it's due to the coloring. And I think sometimes colorists don't get enough. Uh, Credit. Absolutely. Um, there was a great episode of Bat Force Radio where they where they spoke to the colors who did Three Jokers, and even in the Jason Fabic episode where he talked about working with the colors and what they bring um, to his art. It's really interesting. It's it's kind of like the unsung um, hero to coffee and drinking. Uh, I do like. Like, you know, Lana's at the Kent's and, you know, they're going to eat. And I was trying to figure out, like, does Ma just bake a turkey for no reason? Like, is this a celebration of some sort? It's not Christmas. It's not Thanksgiving. But Ma's just making a turkey. That's that's pretty sweet. Um, I mean, I guess Clark can, Clark can eat, so. Um, <laughs> right. I do think it's interesting, like, all the snow, but then now it's raining. And just the idea of, like, the snow, the flood, the slush, and just the misery that brings. And I just love, like you were saying, this part where it says, nothing like having a son who can change the course of mighty rivers. <laughs> right? She knows. She knows. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, you know, the next page is, it's Clark in his bedroom. And even his pose and everything that he is, is the same as what we got earlier when he was laying in his bedroom in spring. Um, and, you know, Paul gives him some wisdom. Uh, 
about being a farmer and like starting out and then moving in and being a better farmer. Uh, you know, and Lana's going to sleep on the couch, which in all honesty, Clark, bro, seriously, you give Lana your bed, you sleep on the couch, man. Okay. That's just, just being courteous, yep. respectful, and a gentleman. All right. You know, you know, I, I, and I, I do have to say, um, I like how when Chief Parker's talking with them about the flood and how he has to, you know, warn all, all these people, and in Lana's narration, you know, she's basically saying he came back to Smallville to kind of escape being Superman, to try to get back some normalcy, to try to get back to the way things used to be, and he has this a tremendous weight on his shoulders and this responsibility and he kind of gets this like he and and what john's saying he, you know uh he's getting this pressure that he's gonna have to fix this he's gonna have to you know make this flood stop and she can understand that tremendous weight on his shoulders that he has to do it like he'll never get a break. He'll never be able to just be Clark because he's more than that. And her knowing that he's going through that, um, but it, it was just it, it was it was good writing. It was it was it's a good re uh, revelation, if you will. And, you know, it makes you really feel for Clark, and it makes you feel. And kind of heartbroken for Lana that you know she'll 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 never have this guy, but you know. I mean, it's true. She she will never have him. You know, it just doesn't work out that way. It's not. I do think it's interesting where we see Clark like in his Superman suit with like the overcoat. And she says, the next morning I saw it for the first time up close. Even under that coat, that big red S stood out. Yeah, I thought I thought it looked great. Like like it it, it reminded me, uh, you know, the Smallville Times with the black coat. But I liked I liked this brown trench coat with the Superman suit. Like I, I digged it, man. I liked it. Yeah, it's it's a night nice shot. Um, and then the, the next panel, uh, the next page, Lana looking up at him in the rain, telling him to, uh, you know, uh, uh, go save the day. She told him to <laughs> she said, just shut up and listen. It was funny. I love it because she, I mean, she right here when she's like, and in case you're wondering, the boy I grew up with who was noble and caring, he's still inside that costume today. Yeah. Yeah. She knows that even. Even with that, even with that, that suit on, he's just he's he's still Clark. You know, he's Clark. He's Superman. He's he's one and the same. I mean, I, it, it's it's kind of nice how they actually didn't go back and like he didn't. Yeah, he's kind of you know having a little pity party for himself right now because of um because of fall, um how how Luther uh um killed that woman mm -hmm. just, just to prove a point to him and and he felt guilty for her death uh, um and that's why he's here here but that he deals with he deals with it himself um he's home he's with pete he's with lana he's with his parents and then the flood happens and he he just gets that little that little um pep talk from her and he goes out and he saves the day and and he gets back to being who he is and he goes back to metropolis to be superman again you know i like that she even when she says um uh what do you call it uh he says all right lana i'll save the day like where is it right here and like the page next to it he he says you know all right you know, he's acknowledging what Lana told him. And I think yeah. he, he needed that because he needed that person that knew him before the suit. Um, I love when the townspeople, he's flying through and they're all looking up and they don't believe what they're seeing. 
Yeah. Well, it's nice, you know, because nowadays, I mean, you open up a book and they spend the first page or two just giving you a recap of of the last book or what's what the what the story is happening, you know, as opposed to just further keep the story moving along. Like when you, even when you pull up, a, even when you pull out a trade, you know, and you get between issue to issue, you should read a story from front to back. And you've got this, you've got, you can tell exactly where the new issue starts because they give you a recap of the last two mm-hmm. before they continue on with the story. And it's a waste of space. And they didn't do that here. It was really good. Yeah. I mean, cause this is honestly made to be re- read as a trade. Like it just it works as a collected uh, edition. We see we see good old Superman, you know, blocking the water. The uh, Kents have an accident. Superman saves saves the dog, saves them. I just I just love the the image of he's got the Kent's truck, uh, and he says, "I'm here, Ma." Like I'm here, Mom. Like he's lifting it up, and uh, you know, Lana kind of is the voice of reason when she says, "Clark, your father." He he says, "Don't worry," and she and Lana's just like Martha. He said not to worry. And there's you know, Pa, cold, shivering, trying to help save Shelby the dog, but then Clark finds Shelby. It's nice. Yeah, she she says not to. Uh, he said not to worry. Like, like she has complete faith in him. And then, you know, I, I love Lana's little saying here. <clears throat> I finally realized why I was, while I was always, ah, can't read. I finally realized why I was away. How special it made me feel, because to understand that man in the cape who could fly. All I needed to know was Clark. Yeah, that's how she. That's where she finally realized this. And then, first of all, I'm just going to point this out. I liked the pastor at the church, you know, trying to help people. Awesome. Good job, pastor. Okay. Uh, but there's no way that all that snow would still be there because of all that rain. Just going to throw that out there. It would all be slush. Melted and disgusting. Uh, yeah, I mean, unless this is a couple of days later after the snow and rain, you know, because it kind of in the next page, the the or when Lana says how special it made me feel, um, <clears throat> the sun is coming out. It seems like the rain is over. Um, so I mean, this could very well be the next day or even a couple of days later, and snow had returned. But yes, it, it, with all that rain, um, yeah, here in Ohio, and uh, I know you guys are farther down uh, south in Ohio, so you, it's a lot more flat land. I'm not sure how it is down there because I know just just a few, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles south of me here, um, when it snows, it's different than when it snows right up here in Toledo because um, we are right on – uh, we're right on the lake mm-hmm. and, and, you know, sometimes we get hit heavy. Sometimes we don't. And when it's, or when it rains in winter, it is so nasty, especially when it rains on top of the snow. Uh, boys, I'm going to ask you this question real quick here. Why do we still live in Ohio? Cause this, this is where Superman was created. It's the only reason why did well, I, I guess I have family why did here. I move to Ohio. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I miss you, Pittsburgh. Why did I? Why did I move back? The two feet of snow they just got to. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I miss sled rides and, and playing with snow, man. Heck yeah. I miss, Heck I yeah. miss driving with. I miss people, you know, driving in the snow that know how to drive. I miss. Right. That. Yes. You know what? I like the snow. I don't like having to. To remove snow as as I do for my job, like shoveling snow out in my yard or out on my drive and my sidewalk and stuff, that's fine. 
I'll do it. I mean, even if it's a long drive or something, I'll do it. I'll go back in. I'll go back out and keep doing it, finish up, whatever. I love the snow. I like the snow. It's very nice. It's beautiful. But when it, when you have to do it and you have to do it at all hours of the night and then salt and a, a huge area, I mean, that's the only reason I've dreaded winter the last few years is because of my job. Otherwise, I like winter and I love the snow. Even though I hate to be cold, it's interesting. <laughs> it's because usually when there's snow, if there's snow, sometimes like it's a nice, like it can be cold, but a, I don't know. There's something beautiful about snow. It'll be cold, but like you can enjoy it because it's not freezing. But then when the temperatures there's like frozen snow, where like there's a wind and you're just like this is miserable. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got to be just right for snow to be falling, and you can just stand out there in the calm, and it's not so bad. It's not cold, you know. Yep. It's only when the wind picks up that's when it's bad. So we have Clark returning to Metropolis, and he comes back with a story about Superman stopping the flood. I think that was a little much, you know. That's kind of a too much of a coincidence, and Lois even is like. You know, she's looking at him, and she is fiery and angry, and Jimmy's in the back snickering. And That's funny. I was going to use that exact word. Jimmy's in there snickering. <laughs> Lois looks very like season one Terry Hatcher right here from Lois and Clark. And, you know, I like how we're still kind of setting up the Lois and Clark storyline. Like, it's been opened up, you know. It's, yeah. And then we we see Lex looking out his uh, window, and there's that boy, you know, chasing that stupid cat. And we see the robot yelling, citizen. And the boy falls. And Superman saves him and says, tell Luther I'm back. And this is where Superman's like, haven't we met before? I'm Trevor. He's like, good to meet you, Trevor. Folks call me Superman. Kind of says it kind of far away, though, from where Trevor is. So that's kind of, uh, you know. And then we got our closing thoughts from hey. Lana. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to remember. Were, were there people in these uh, flex suits? Or were they just uh, robots? I think they were robots. Because I don't remember seeing anybody in a, in a flex suit. So that's the first real flex suit we see, right? I don't know about you guys, but, like, um, I don't know. I kind of expected this uh, uh, four-part story to kind of end with a with a nice, good kind of showdown with Luther. The, like, like, Superman being like, you can't push me around, man. You know, I'm here. I'm, you know, I'm the hero, and I'm going to always be here to defeat you and take you down. And because you're a monster and and like what would have been good for me <laughs> would have been if he like when that robot was talking to that kid if he just took that robot and just like picked it up went in front of lex corp in the window where lex is just looking out and just destroyed that robot threw it down on the balcony and be like, I'll take it from here, or something like that, or you know, some like, I, no, I'll take care of this city. This is mine. This is my city, not your city. You know, kind of mm -hmm. kind of like that uh, that speech that uh, Dean Dean Kane kind of gave. Uh, um, uh, what was that thing? I don't know. Lex Lex Luthor and uh, Lois and Clark after the after the pilot or something, or after he was doing his after the episode where uh, he was like testing them. Yeah. And and he like met him on the balcony. And he's like, I'm here and I'll always be here. And you know, if you're ever wondering where I am, just look up. Exactly. Because Lex because Lex made that comment saying, you know, I love how people have to always look up to see me. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I would like that. I would, I would like that here. Um, I, I don't. Know. I, I, th I think they could have wrapped it up a little bit, just a little bit more. Like, yeah, Superman. Yeah, they're drones. Back in summer, he talks about the LexCorp drones, who come in. They're just robots. And I, I, I feel you, Brian. Okay. I have a very similar sentiment of just 
I kind of wish there had just been that kind of like, you know, like Luther, you tried to, you tried to break me. Like you tried to attack me from a point because, you know, part of the story is Clark Superman learning about how truly evil, evil people can be. You know, he, he didn't even like think about Luther would go to such dark and depth in places, you know, um, and he had to learn the hard way and he had to overcome that, you know, if he's going to do what he's going to do, there are evil people who are going to do things and, you know, how do you combat that? But yeah, that's, it's the, yeah, it's yeah. the idea that Clark, he Clark, can he can do just about anything but he can't be everywhere and he can't do um everything for everybody you know it's it's like that that episode where lex is testing him and and says uh you know uh somebody will always die because you can't be somebody will die because you can't be everywhere at once like that's that's hard for him to accept but he he does everything he can Mm-hmm. And, and he learns he learns to be who he is and that he can't save everybody but he'll he'll try i i love that episode that's one of my favorite episodes ever mm-hmm. it actually mirrors this story really because he goes back to smallville to talk to his parents and and yep. um returns returns better and and you know returns better for it all right. Any other final thoughts to wrap up Superman for all seasons? Uh, this is a great book. Um, uh, I I will definitely read it again. Um, as we know, this is my first time reading this uh, this book through. Uh, I only read it chapter by chapter as we've been doing this for each season this year. So um, <clears throat> I actually can't wait to. Uh, read it again here soon straight through, uh, and yeah read it straight through as as one story instead yeah. of piece by piece i'm uh i myself am kind of curious to that of how i'll feel if i uh sit down and just kind of go through it and what what i'll gather from it so yeah and and it, it ended on a very strong chapter i liked it i really did i, I did too I mean, opposed to, like, what you were saying about, like, I just wish that he kind of confronted Luther, but I'm good with it. Any final thoughts, bro? Um, I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of would have wanted maybe one more chapter, like, uh, like a return to spring. And, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is Superman being the Superman we, we need him to be. Um, but I, but this winter chapter was it was a nice emotional chapter. Um, you got some real depth of how people view Superman. You know, well the whole story has been how people view Superman and how people view Clark and and how how he affects those around him and those close to him. Um, and it's a really solid story. It's 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 a really a, uh, good and emotional story, um, you know, the colors and, and the art and the look and the feel of it. Um, you know, and I gotta, I gotta say like, we got a sequel to the long Halloween, uh, with dark victory. And I, I think they should make a sequel for this. Um, I, I would, I would like to see some like years later type story to this. Um, and how, you know, maybe maybe some more different perspectives. Maybe let's get a perspective from Jimmy. Let's get a perspective from Perry. Um, I, I would like to see more. You know, you saying that kind of just makes me think, like, you know what? Uh, a, another chapter that would have just been spring again. And then, like, maybe, like, each page or each two pages is, like, from one person's perspective. Like, we get, like, a page kind of, like, catching up on Pete and Lana. A page, like, for, like you said, from Perry's point. A pa- like, a page or thought, you know, kind of from Jimmy. And just kind of, like... Yeah, like a, like a full circle. Yeah, like... Like a full circle story. That could have been really neat, so... But... 
All right. Well, that's what I do. Well, good listeners, we hope everyone's having a safe and wonderful winter season. Now that it's winter, if you're enjoying snow, awesome. If you're not, awesome. And just remember. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.